Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Joey with Steel Blade Woodworks. And I teamed up with Longer, and they sent me out a Ray 5 10-watt diode laser and some accessories, as you can see over here to my right-hand side. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to get this unboxed, set it up, and then get it hooked up to Lightburn so you can see how this diode runs. And after we get this diode hooked up, and running and do some test burns with it then we're going to incorporate some of the accessories they sent to us we have everything unboxed and we'll just name off a few things that we have here you have your main controller which is lcd touchscreen also has an sd card slot to insert your sd if you wish to transfer your files that way and you can also plug the usb cord provided in the kit directly to your computer to operate the diode laser. You have some protective glasses. You have the Ray 5 10 watt diode laser head. You have some materials to test with. You also have some tie straps to do some cable management once the laser is together. You also have the legs for the diode laser. So you'll only see three of these because this acts as one of the legs for the diode laser. All your parts are labeled accordingly to what they are for each step of the process of building this laser. We're gonna get going. We're gonna start off with the frame of the laser and I'll show you step by step how to construct it, how to put the gantry on. The gantry is already assembled it has the belt already in place so that will not need to be adjusted the only adjustments that will need to be done are going to be to check this is a kind of a cam bearing wheel and you may need to adjust this once you put this on the frame but we'll get to that in a later step so let me get this set up and we'll come right back All right, in this step, you need a flat surface, which will aid in getting this bed properly square and aligned properly. So here I'm just making sure everything's lined up, everything's orientated in the right direction. And you get your first pack of parts and go ahead and sort them out so you know exactly where everything's gonna go. And you have the slotted L-shaped brackets that go in the corner. That's what helps attach the extruded aluminum along with the black Allen head screws that you see. These slotted L-shaped brackets will only work one way, so be very mindful that they will only work in one orientation, which allows the stretchers of the extruded aluminum to slide up along the long rails that go from front to back that your gantry will ride on. Here I'm showing you the slot and how it needs to go into the stretchers of extruded aluminum. And then it allows it to go back and forth, but the slot allows the bracket to slide into the extruded aluminum of the rails and allow you to flush all those extruded aluminums in the corner up. So I only work in one direction. Uh, you cannot do it. It won't allow the, the extruded aluminum to slide in so once you get these properly orientated you start putting the black allen head screws in and you can start snugging everything up and getting everything kind of tight but don't tighten everything till you're completely done here i'm showing you that the zero tick mark indicates the front of the laser which takes this longer labeled extruded aluminum there that's the front of your machine and just repeat the process with the uh, slotted L-shaped corner brackets in there, as you can see how they're sliding in. And it's just repeat on all four corners. Now, I'll highly stress this is do not over tighten these uh, screws because that's a steel screw going into aluminum. You will mess the threads up, so be mindful when you're tightening, it does not take a whole lot. And just keep going around each corner, making sure everything's flush, 
putting pressure down when you start tightening up to make sure everything gets squared up and correctly in place. As you can see, I'm pushing down on all these as I'm tightening them up. And just go around, work yourself around the, the frame of the laser and tighten everything up. And then we'll go on to the next step here where we're starting to tighten up the L-shaped brackets on the inside. And here again, it doesn't take very much. You can get them tightened, but don't over tighten these. And there you go, the frame is done. All right, so now that the frame's squared up, everything's attached, we come up with the problem. And I purposely did this. I wanted y'all to see that the gantry will hit if you put the piece on the front that's labeled with longer. That piece should be left off. Should be left off so that you can slide the gantry on because that plate that holds the laser head is not adjustable that I could see. So here I'm gonna take it off and we're going to get the gantry put on. So this is a reverse process here and uh, we'll just remove it real quick and we'll slide the gantry back on to the long runner rails. And it's just simply goes on very easy and slide it back and go ahead and reverse the process and put the front piece of extruded aluminum back on. Here I'm showing you two size of bolts. On the upper left hand portion of the LCD screen to mount it to the extruded aluminum, it takes that shorter screw so it won't bottom out on the actual other screw that is attaching your bed frame. And then on the right hand side just takes a long screw. Now we're going to move on to mounting the legs of the laser. And those are pretty simple. It already has holes where these go mounted as you can see just screw them in takes two bolts on each leg there's no way you can get these backwards and just start going around the laser and putting these in making sure everything's nice and flush and again do not over tighten these because you can mess the threads up so just be mindful of that as you're doing it and me make sure that you are keeping everything nice and flush because this is what's going to keep your bed level so these have to be properly put on there and level and flush with the rails as you can see we're doing that as we're tightening it and it doesn't take very much here i'm showing you the limit screw which is already mounted on that rail but you need to mount the front limit screw which is in that same package where all the screws for the leg it takes a nylon bushing and just simply put that in and that is your limit screw for the front portion of the laser here i'm showing you that there is some play in the gantry and there's a cam lock bearing guide roller on the bottom that you simply use a provided wrench and adjust that which will keep that gantry from wobbling like that and it doesn't take very much just keep wobbling and adjust until you get it nice and tight and there we've gotten it nice and snug against the rails and i'm just checking it making sure everything's correct and rolling and we'll move on to the next step here in this step we're going to be placing the drive belts and in the extruded aluminum long rails there's a groove where that belt will go setting inside the belt has a rib side and a smooth side the rib side will go down which that rib will eventually make contact with the drive gear so go ahead and place that in there. Using your Allen head key wrench, you can use that to help you snake that belt through there. And the way this orientates, it goes underneath the roller, then up above the gear drive gear, and then comes back down and goes underneath the other roller like so. And then you'll simply just put it through the slot on the front leg, pulling out a little bit of the belt, inserting your T-slot screw and locking that piece of the belt in or that portion of the belt. 
Turn around to the front, do the same thing, pull it through the slot, put your T-slot screw, and then go ahead and start tightening it. But here, you will use your index finger and your thumb and put tension on it, which that'll give it the proper tension to lock it onto the gear and tension the belt properly. Here I'm showing you the screw with the T-slot nut and it's just put them together. It makes it a lot easier uh, to get that to work. Once you start turning it, it will lock itself in place and just repeat the process on the other side. As you can see, I'm using the Allen wrench key to help me snake that through there. And simply again, same steps, put the T-slot screw, secure that in, come around to the front, slip it through the groove and then put tension on it and lock it in place with the provided hardware. And that is the proper tension that you need. Here I'm just checking to make sure the belt is riding on the gear properly. If it's not, you can adjust those gears with the Allen head screws. And there you go, this step's done. On this portion, we're going to lock the laser head onto the gantry. And what I'm gonna be showing you here is there's two small screws with some nylon bushings, which will be used in a later step. But those are very important, don't lose them. And we're gonna grab the thumb screws and that is what mounts the diode laser head onto the gantry. Simply put the screws in as shown and snug them up, one on each side. On this step here, we'll use the small screws with the nylon bushing. And they go on the back side of the diode laser. They screw onto the diode laser head and they run in a groove on that laser head plate, which allows that laser head to stay straight when you loosen the thumb screws to adjust for your height. And they go in there, one on each side, pretty straightforward. In this step, we're going to secure the wiring harness. So just make sure you put your gantry and your laser head to the furthest position. This cabling has the connectors and they only go in one spot. You can't get this wrong just the way it is wire wrapped up and just plug them in. Make sure you match up your grooves. They snap in very easy and pretty straightforward. These things are not very hard and there you go. Here we're gonna use a tie wrap and secure the wiring harness right above the drive motor and that will hold everything in place while you're operating the machine. And there you go. All the cabling's done, everything's wired in and you're ready to move on to the next step. Pretty straightforward. going to choose to pick light burn to actually run the laser where I have a computer hooked up to it and I'm going to show you how to get light burn installed once you have your laser on we're going to come up here and we're going to open light burn okay here at this we're going to go ahead and see if we can get light burn to find the laser be sure your device is connected. We have that next. It's searching, scanning. And we'll see if it's able to locate this uh, Ray 5. And it shows Gerbil, COM6. So it did find it. So we're gonna add the device. We're gonna name this the longer Five. Your X length and Y axis length are both 400 millimeters, which is right. We're going to hit next. We're going to mark front and left corner as our auto home. We're going to hit next. And we're going to finish setting it up. Now we're going to come up here and pick it and we're going to make it our default laser. And there we go. Hit OK. All right. As you can see here, I imported my logo into Lightburn. And once you get your laser set up in Lightburn, it's simple as bringing in this. I'll show you a few tips. If you double click on this, it'll pop it up. 
So you can turn crosshatch in, and I'm gonna show you what crosshatch is. And these are a few pointers of how to set this up when you are doing your, your different engravings or cuttings. And we could come in here and turn crosshatch on. Line intervals is the distance of your lines as the laser is going. And we put this at a 050. Uh, again, I'm just stabbing at these. Uh, I'm used to running a CO2, but we're gonna get to know this diode. And before you know it, it, it just takes on anything that you get, it's gonna take time to learn it, to know what settings, every material is gonna be different, but even on the same materials from, from one piece of sheet good to another, things will change the characteristics what it how what materials were used to put it together especially if it's like birch plywood etc 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 so we're just going to go with kind of these settings we're going to do 80 percent power at a speed of 15,000 millimeters per minute as it's showing there okay so once you set that up i did turn cross hatch now i'm going to show you what it does once you have your your burn highlighted like so or picked we can go ahead and do a preview and what this is going to do it's going to show you we're going to do this in a high speed so it doesn't take so long but as you see it burning it's going to burn in this direction like so and then it's going to come back and it's going to come this other way and what that does it gives you a more detailed and better look on your burns on these diodes so you see how it's coming back in a different direction and doing a detailed burn which really makes that burn vibrant we have this here we're going to go ahead and we've already set the origin on the laser we're going to hit frame and as you can see it's going to move around and that's how you make sure that you're within the area that you want to engrave and once that's ready to go we have it set for fill and we're just going to hit start and let it run so wrapping up the longer ray 5 10 watt laser up until this point i'm very impressed this little diode laser packs a punch I'm glad I partnered up with Longer to test this out. It has done very well on the tests that I've done. Easy to assemble, easy to get connected to Lightburn. And I highly recommend anybody wanting to get into the laser world and get their feet wet, give this little powerhouse a try. I highly, highly recommend it. It does very good engraving. Uh, on the next video, we're gonna try out some other accessories that they sent along would be the rotary tool, the honeycomb bed, and the air assist. I can't even imagine how much more it's gonna make this so much better, adding those pieces in and trying it out. We're gonna do some other materials. We're gonna probably include some leather and other stuff and see what it can do. Uh, so please like and subscribe. Hope you found this video helpful. And always remember to hit that notification bell so you can get notified when we're going to come out with some more videos on this longer Ray 5 10 watt laser. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good day.